In this video, we're going to learn how to make a purchasing system in our store level so that we can properly purchase characters in our store level and use them in our game level. And there is also a lot of improvements in the code and logic architecture. So now unlike before, you can easily add more characters into the game and all the selection system, the camera movement, character spawning and so on are handled a lot more dynamically. And if you don't want to keep waiting for me to release the new videos to add this functionality and improvements that I just mentioned into a prototype game, then you can download a preview project file from my Patreon. So this is a way for you to support me and you also get something in return for it. So if you were to click on the Patreon link down in the comment section, you will be navigated over here to my Patreon page. And in here, you can see that I don't really have any memberships over here. I just didn't have any idea for those so I didn't add anything. So you need to actually click on shop over here and over here you can buy the preview project file just like any other digital product. Now it is not necessary by any means that you have to buy and download this preview project file to follow along with the tutorial series. It is completely optional. And regardless of whether you choose to buy and download this project file or not, I will still make the videos explaining and implementing everything I have done in the preview project file. So you can click on the product over here and it should take you to this page over here. And in here, make sure that you read the product description over here so that you understand what you're getting out of this product. So yeah, that's all I really want to talk about. If you want to support me, you can buy this product over here. And that's enough about Patreon. Back to the video. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the content browser, go to blueprints. And then over here, I'm going to change the name of this blueprint over here called the Save G High Score and Coins. So I'm going to call this BP Save G. Now you might be asking why are we changing the name and the reason for that is because I want to save all of the different game data that I want to save in a single save game. So that's easier for me to manage and get the data whenever I want. Because if I have a bunch of save game over here, it is going to be a little bit more complicated to manage that data. And for this particular game, there is no reason to have multiple save games. And it's easier to manage the game data overall through the single save game because we can load this single save game to get all the data that we want that is saved into it. And by game data, I'm obviously talking about the high score and the total coins that we are saving in the save game. And also for our character selection system, we're going to be using a bunch of additional data specifically relating to the characters into the save game over here. And also for that reason, I felt like the previous name, Save G High Score and Coins, didn't really make sense over here. So now that we have changed the name over here, it's going to cause an issue over here in the third person game mode. So if you were to open it, you won't find any compiler issues over here, but the save game will not be working properly anymore. All right, so if I were to test it out, You can see we're collecting a bunch of coins. And you can see over here, nothing is being shown over here. Our load game from slot over here is not able to load the data from the save game. And that is because the data that was previously stored in the slot is no longer matching with the save game. So how do you fix this? It's quite simple. We're going to delete the previous save game. So click on reset, then click on retry. So now, if I were to try dying again, you can see now it's properly saving the data. So yeah, that is something to keep in mind whenever you're changing the name of the save game. And another thing that I want to do over here is remove the save references over here. So I'm going to delete it. 
and directly connect the references over here. Hold right, just like this. And also over here, change the name of the save game as BP save game. To remove the save reference over here and then get the SBP save game and connect it over here. Alright, so if you compile this and then try running this over here and again make sure to update the data in the save game. So just click on reset, quit and then play again. Now the high score is 4 and the total coins is 0. So again it's working. And again, why did I delete the save reference that I previously added over here? Over here we have the variable that we created before. You can just delete it. Alright, so compile again. So back to the question, why did we delete the save reference that we created before over here? And the answer to that is because we don't really need that save reference. Previously, when we added the save reference, it has the potential to cause more issues later on. Alright, so when I was testing the save game system in the store level with the save reference, like we were doing it previously, it was causing issues. And I basically just removed that save reference and used the save game reference that we have over here directly as the save game to slot. I feel like the previous method was a bit too overcomplicated and this method is a lot better. So yeah, that is the reason why I'm choosing this. Again, if you want, you can choose the previous method, but be aware that there's potential chances for it to not work. And also, especially when you want to load the data. All right, so you need to actually get the save reference and then you need to cast it to the save game. And then from the cast to the save game, we need to then set that variable so that we can use that variable wherever we want in our code like we already do for the for the game over blueprint widget we already do this so as you can see over here we are loading the game from this load and again in here we didn't get the save reference like we done previously over here all right but it's still working fine over here but again sometimes it won't work properly it's a lot more complicated when you're when you're trying to save the data into this slot. And that is the reason why I removed the save reference. I just felt that it complicated things unnecessarily. Try adjusting the nodes over here so they aren't spaced away so far. And yeah, just like that. Save it. Close both of them. And after that, what we are going to do is we are going to select the BP third person character over here. Right click. And I'm going to select create child blueprint class. All right, so I'm going to call this one child BP male runner. And we're going to once again create another blueprint class. And this time we're going to call it child BP female runner. And for the third time, we're going to again create a child blueprint class once again from the bp third person character all right so make sure you create the child blueprint from the bp third person character over here and again we're going to rename it as child bp cube runner so now we have three child blueprints of the bp third person character i'm going to create another folder and call it playable characters select the three characters over here and then drag them to the playable characters folder so select move here and after you've done that right click on the blueprints and select fix up any redirectors in folder Boundary engine has this redirector thing i recommend you check the documentation for this for more information Basically, a redirector is used 
to fix any issues that comes from moving any asset like blueprints or static measures or anything that is being referenced somewhere from one folder to another. I recommend you to check the documentation for more information on how redirectors work because I think it's very important to have an idea on what it is. Coming back over here, we have the mail runner, Charlie BP. So I'm going to select it. And in here, we don't have anything much to do for the mail runner. Everything is working fine. You can just compile and save this and close it. And for the female runner, we need to make some changes. So make sure to change the skeletal mesh to the SK mannequin female. Right, and I guess that's the only thing you need to do over here. Compile and save, close it. And then for the cube runner, we're obviously going to change the skeletal mesh to skeletal cube instead. All right, so make sure to scale the cube up. I'm just going to scale it like this. Let's move this a little bit up above. And yeah, that's really about it. I guess you could change or add a material over here. Basic asset, I suppose. You can add any material that you want, so it's up to your choice. I'm just choosing a random material over here. So after the shader compilation is done, it will look like this. So once again, compile and save and close it. But yeah, basically how child blueprints work is basically a child blueprint takes in everything that the parent blueprint or the BP third person character in this case has. So once again, if I were to open one of these, one of these child blueprints, you can see over here under parent class, it's showing BP third person character. And if we were to go to the viewport, you can see it, almost everything about here is exactly the same as it is with our third person character. All right, so we have the fog plane, the same camera, the mesh. I guess the mesh is different because obviously we changed it. But apart from that, almost everything, even the tick, the event logic is the same. So if I were to use this as a character, which I can, so I'm just going to demo it right now over here. So again, if I were to search for child BB and select female runner as our default pawn class, compile and then play the game. You can see that our character is now the female runner and almost everything about this is exactly the same as it is with our third person character. So this is a great way for us to easily create characters in our game. So in the previous videos where we created the character selection system, we had a very inconvenient way of choosing characters. We were simply replacing the static mesh with a new mesh that we have specified over here through a switch on string node. And this is a very poor way of implementation. At that time, it was a quick and simple way of creating a character selection system, but obviously it has its limits. So with the current system, if you wanted to change the material, it's a little bit more complicated, especially by using this switch on string node, which has a very fixed number of characters that you can choose from. And trying to add materials onto this is also a little bit more complicated. And with this method, if you wanted to add a different a different animation class that is this thing over here the third person animation blueprint the animation blueprint or the animation class is what controls the animation of the skeletal mesh and again trying to change that over here is a lot more complicated the issue with this is that if you wanted to add a new character over here then you had to create a new pin over here and then manually connect the nodes and then connect a material for this node and then you have to somehow try modifying the animation of this blueprint over here and it's all really complicated so a much better way of actually selecting characters especially playable characters is by using child blueprints because they basically work 
exactly the same as the BP third person character. So you don't need to really modify it too much. And you can just directly change the skeletal mesh. You can also change the animation class, the materials, and many other things. So overall, child blueprints are a much better way of easily creating and selecting characters, unlike the previous method, where we simply just swapped the skeletal meshes in our third person character. And that's it for this video. In the next part of the tutorial series, we're going to learn data tables, structures, struct arrays, and so on. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching and see you later. Bye.